In this lecture, we're going to look at protein needs and physical activity. Keep in mind we've mentioned that carbohydrate is the most important macronutrient for people who are physically active. And that might come as a surprise to you because many people mistakenly think that it's protein. The protein is important and the amino acids, which are the building blocks of protein, are important. But they're usually, they usually come secondary to your carbohydrate needs. Your body uses amino acids, again, which are the building blocks of protein, to build and maintain muscle, as well as to provide fuel. Contrary to popular belief, excessive protein intake does not build muscle. What builds muscle? It's the repetitive muscle contractions of physical activity. Now we do know that in the 24 to 48 hours following intense exercise, muscles increase your rate of protein synthesis. So having protein in the recovery phase is important, but just having protein by itself will not alone increase your muscle mass. Okay, so taking large amounts of supplemental protein or amino acids do not force your muscles to gain extra bulk. Protein is important in the recovery phase following intense activity. Consuming protein one to two hours after physical activity can accelerate muscle protein synthesis more than would just be expected from exercise alone or more than would be expected from just eating protein consumption. So the combination there is key. You've got to do physical activity and then following that, having some protein can help your body recover and repair but protein alone is not going to build muscle mass. How much protein do you need? Where do we get it from? Let's start there. Strength and endurance athletes do have higher protein needs than do regular healthy people. And so the protein needs for athletes is actually higher than that of the DRI. Protein foods include things like meat, eggs, dairy, legumes, nuts, and seeds. Eating protein-rich foods helps give you enough amino acids. You do not need to, and you actually should not take, supplemental amino acids. Amino acids are chemically similar, and in that regard, they compete for absorption in the same parts of your small intestine. And overdoing it with one, for example, from a supplement, can lead to imbalances of the other. So again, focus on getting your protein from foods. You do not need protein supplements for the most part, and you certainly do not need amino acid supplements. This slide is showing you a table that estimates the protein needs for athletes. Now, it's important to remember that the baseline healthy individual DRI needs for protein is based on 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight per day. So if you're just a healthy person who's not that physically active, take your weight in kgs, multiply it times 0.8, and that will give you the grams of protein per day you need. If you're a power, like a strength or speed athlete, Protein needs are the highest, somewhere between 1.2 to 1.7 grams per kilogram per day. Endurance athletes have higher protein needs than the average population, but not as high protein needs as power athletes. Endurance athletes need somewhere between 1.2 to 1.4 grams per kilogram per day. So if that describes you, multiply your weight in kgs times 1.2 to give yourself the lower range and your weight in kgs times 1.4 to give yourself the upper range. Please note that these recommendations never exceed 1.7. The majority of the body of literature about sports nutrition has shown us that there's no benefit to taking in greater than 1.7 grams per kilogram per day. Some physical activity magazines, muscle building magazines will show you crazy diets that say you need three, four, or five grams of protein per kilogram per day. Again, there's absolutely no medical literature that supports going above 1.7 with regards to increasing athletic performance.